very interesting. I just came up here and Marcus has left. He didn't show me this before the service, but I don't know if you know, he has a whole time schedule here. I'm just seeing how long he's given me. We're pretty much on time. That's pretty impressive. I'm not telling you how, when, when I'm due to finish. <laughs> Today's been a very special day and it's a great privilege and joy for me to, on behalf of Bishop Christopher, license Cara. It marks a new chapter for Cara in, his, in her ministry. I think it's an important thing to say because, of course, you have known Cara for many years already and uh, you know her, who she is, but I guess a lot of you will know her in a sense as Marcus's wife, as a mother of Dorothy and Caspian. It is Caspian, isn't it? Yes. I'm just, my brain is going old, but I thought I'd get that right. Um, but now her ministry comes to you as an assistant priest, and that will bring a, a change and a real depth, both for Cara and for the mission and ministry of you as a whole. So she has been licensed today with authority to preach, to preside at Holy Communion, to offer pastoral care, to reach out to others with the good news of Christ. But it is good also that as we have shared in the, the licensing and the responses we made, but also hearing from Michael and from Becky, a wonderful reminder that this is a ministry that we all share. Within it, we have different roles. I guess not everybody here has been to an ordination service where priests are ordained, although you've, I'm sure, had opportunities to go to Cara's ordination and Luke's and uh, other curates who have been here um, in this wonderful church. So I did think that it might be worth me just reminding us all and even offering Cara a little reminder of what priests are called to do. This is from the ordination service. Priests are called to be servants and shepherds among the people to whom they are sent. With their bishop and fellow ministers, they are to proclaim the word of God and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. They are to be messengers, stewards of the Lord. They are to teach and admonish, to feed and provide for the Lord's family, to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations and to guide them through its confusions that they may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptize new disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and to walk with them in the way of Christ, nurturing them in the faith. They are to unfold the scriptures, to preach the word in season and out of season, to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table and lead his people in worship, offering with them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for all in need. They are to minister to the sick and prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people that the whole church may be built up in unity and faith. Cara, we pray for you. <laughs> for that is what God's calling on you and God will empower you and bless you. And God has provided a wonderful team here, both of other ordained ministers, other ministers, and the whole church together to share in that ministry. And ultimately, the beginning and the end of all this is Christ's ministry. 
Michael spoke about becoming like Marcus. Well, that's one thing, and that may not be a bad thing, because the more Marcuses there are in the church, the better. But ultimately, in our ministry, of course, we're shaped to be like Christ. And our reading from Luke gives us a, a, a really simple but a direct way into thinking about what lies at the heart of the ministry of Christ. It began with these words, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. The heart of Christ's ministry, the heart of our ministry, the heart of your ministry together as Ascension Balaam is to be with those who are on the edge, to be with those who long to know of God's love, those who feel ex excluded, those who know what it is to fail or mess up, to be with them, to speak with them, to listen to them, to love them, and as Jesus did, to eat with them. Isn't it an amazingly wonderful thing that what the uh, Pharisees and scribes said, meaning to be an absolute criticism of Christ, actually is a statement of the truth and the heart of his ministry. This man, this fellow, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. Ascension is a place where I know many are welcomed and many are fed. Whether it's through the cafe, the bubble church, your work with refugees, with so many other groups, you are showing that ministry of Christ that welcomes all and eats with them. This table, where we will have in a moment Holy Communion together, is simply that, isn't it? This is the place where God welcomes sinners and eats with them. Time and time again, we come to Christ and find that we are welcomed and find that we are fed and nourished by his grace. And our ministry simply seeks to do that, to offer to others in so many ways, whether that's here or in Moldova, the welcome of Christ and to eat and sit down with others. Our ministries themselves, Cara, your ministry here, will be sustained by that nourishing grace of God as God welcomes you, as God feeds you. And in our reading, we have two great examples of what it is to have, be, have a ministry that is shaped by the grace and the love of God. The story of a shepherd who has a hundred sheep but loses just one of them and yet diligently, unconditionally, consistently searches for that wandered sheep until the shepherd finds it, knowing that without that, that shepherd, that sheep would starve and die. Finds the sheep, brings it home exhausted. A woman who in her perhaps small, dark house loses a precious coin and takes time to clear her whole house, sweeping that straw off the floor, whatever was there, until she finds that coin. 
and then both. Call their friends and neighbors and rejoice and celebrate that what was lost has been found. That's the heart of God. That's what people saw in Jesus and some loved it and some hated it. The heart of God that is always with those who are lost, those who are on the edge, those who are most in need, not necessarily the in crowd. Seeking, searching, and then finding and rejoicing and celebrating. God's love is not for the few, not for the in crowd, comfortable though that may be, but it is uncomfortably, joyfully for all. And of course today also we've been reminded of how our late queen knew that love of God and knew in her own life the call of God and so wonderfully lived it out her faith in Jesus Christ was, as she described it, her rock, her strength. Her faith shaped who she was. It was her faith and all that Christ meant to her that enabled all those wonderful things we have been celebrating in these last days, the way she was able to put people at their ease the interest she took in people, the enjoyment she found in others and in life. We know how her faith shaped the messages she gave so preciously to us at Christmas and other times. The values of tolerance, of peace, of belonging. And most of all, it was her faith that shaped her complete sense of service. Her vocation. Her calling was not one that she chose. It was not there that something that she wanted to find fulfillment in life. It was one that was thrust upon her, but one she accepted and lived for over 70 years. She signed herself, Elizabeth, your servant. For all ministry, all leadership is at its greatest when it is service. And so as we meet this morning, still mourning her loss and celebrating her life, as we meet this morning having licensed Kara and praying for Kara in her new ministry here, praying for Michael, for Becky, for each other, perhaps we might too also renew our own Ministry, shaped by the love and the heart of God. And I simply end by reminding us of some words of the late Queen, spoken on her 21st birthday. She said this, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great family to which we all belong. I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless you who are willing to share it. May God bless us as we each seek to follow the calling that God gives us and do so with the love and the heart of God and do so with a heart of service. Amen.